Welcome to the Silicon Slopes podcast. I'm here with Adam Sheffield, who is the Chief Revenue Officer of Global Upside. How are you? Great. Thanks. Glad to be here. Thanks for the invite. You bet. All right. So um, I was doing a little bit of research on Global Upside, and it's a big company. Yes. It does a lot of things. But uh, let's see if you can kind of summarize what you guys do. <laughs> well, really, uh, you know, we're an organization. We're based in the Bay Area. Um, we have a big shared service office here in Salt Lake. And what we do is we primarily help companies go global, right? Um, there's a lot of challenges with organizations to do that, and there's many different ways to do it. And we help them do it compliantly, help them, um, you know, make sure that everything runs properly for them so they don't get any risks as they go international because they do need to take advantage of what's happening. Because if they're going to win today, they really do need to be global. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is a good summary, and it uh, covers a lot of complicated things, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I can only imagine you've got languages, different yes. political systems, different cultures, cultures, yeah. money, yeah. time, yes, all of exactly. that. So it's not for the faint of heart to uh, help people do that, let alone want to do it, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, what are some of the, uh, the types of companies that would uh, procure your services? Well, that's, that's a great question. Um, so what we do, we, we see ourselves as a life cycle company. So if somebody goes international, they're in different phases of their life cycle by country. So we have, we have some big, big players like Energizer utilize our services. You know, we have, you know, kind of startups like Starlink from, you know, SpaceX, right? They utilize our services. And, and some of the things that, you know, is interesting is we're with them through that challenges that they might have. So when they're kind of a startup, they have different needs than when they're large organizations. And how, how can we help support them? Um, with those different changes as they grow and mature. Okay. Mm -hmm. So getting a little bit more granular. Though, yeah. I'm a company and I sell widgets and I sell these in America and I want to sell them in um, Brazil. Yeah. I assume there's like paperwork that might need to be filled out <laughs> and uh, all of that, right? So, is, but then I assume you guys have software platforms that help and facilitate with all of this. But um, how encompassing is the services that you guys provide. Yeah, absolutely. So if you were to do in that scenario, right, you're going to Brazil, first of all, great. The barriers to entry to go global are never been lower. And the reason why, there's two ways to go global now. It used to be that you would have to set up your own entity, right, go through that whole process, which we do and support clients with. Um, but the other option is become in, hire a company like ours, which we are the employer of record. So we will hire your Brazilian employees for you. So you don't have a footprint, so to speak, in that country. All the compliance aspects are being done. You're able to sell and market your services or your widgets in Brazil, take advantage of that market, at the same time not have to go through all the challenges and tasks and you know, you know, burden that happens going the other direction as well. Got it. Mm -hmm. So in a, you know, let's say there's the Brazilian lo location that's selling the widgets of you know, my company in this example. Mm -hmm. When they go home and somebody says, where do you work? Do they say Global Upside or do they say the, the company that no, they work for? That's, that's a great point. No, they say the company they work for. Think of us as the, our clients, they manage the day-to-day -day activity of that employee, where they go, laptops, phones, you know, business cards. It's, it's, they function just like their employees. We are the employer of record for the compliance purposes of that employee. Okay. So that's one of the things that we do and provide that service for companies so they can go global faster now than they've ever been able to in the past. Yeah. And that's important. At the same time, they're not worried about some unforeseen law that they're not aware of, yeah. right? That could really come back and haunt them. So we, can, we take that burden off them. Yeah. And I've interacted with folks, and I assume there's a lot that uh, know they have the whole world where they can sell their products and wares and stuff. Mm -hmm. But they, whether they've had a bad experience with some other government bureaucracy yep. or what, what some bad travel experience, they just don't actually want to do it. They're like, I, there might be millions of dollars there, but I can't manage the pain points of what that might entail. But you guys kind of That's our job, that off. right? We eliminate that for them. So, you know, we, we talked about, you know, when they first kind of, maybe they use that employer of record service, but now they're growing so fast that, you know, in Brazil, in your case, that maybe it makes sense to set up their own entity. Yeah. Well, we help them transition that. We do all the HR for them. We make sure those employees have the right employee contracts in Brazil. Right, we make sure that the payroll's being done, accounting's being done all properly, so they they really can go global much easier than they've ever had in the past. 
And what makes us unique is that fact that you don't have to cobble together a bunch of providers to do this. Yeah. We do this under our umbrella and we've been doing it for 21 years. Got it. So you could, you know, if you're the CEO of this company, you could with confidence fly there and not be worried that you will get arrested for tax evasion on yes. something you had no yeah. clue about. Yeah. Yeah. That's we, we, we've, we've helped companies in that sense. I have to tell you a quick little story. I won't say the company name, but we had one company that uh, their lawyers said, do not fly into China, your CFO and your CEO, because of, you know, not being able to file the taxes properly for some of their employees. And so we had to go back and rewind the last two years and get it all fixed yeah. so they could actually fly in to that, to China, which was an actually important part of their growth yeah. and not feel like they were going to be, you know, arrested or something like that, even though they didn't mean to do anything wrong. Yeah. It just happened to be that way because they didn't understand the law. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a bad day to end up in a Chinese <laughs> yeah, that's, prison. That's true. Um, all right. So where would a, what an idea like this company come from? What's kind of the founding story? Yeah. So th- it originally started, you know, back in the dot com days. So I said, we've been in 21 years and it was just the challenge around labor accounting primarily and kind of outsourcing some of those challenges that a lot of the dot coms had back in the day. And that's just morphed into more payroll, uh, you know, and then HR because a lot of the mid market companies or small, small to mid market companies worldwide, they don't have the expertise globally. And so it just has kind of come from the idea of servicing our clients. What do they need and when, right? We're not just a point in time solution. We're there with them across their journey in these different countries around the world. And so that idea has just kind of morphed as laws have changed, as things have opened up like employer of record type services. Mm -hmm. We wanted to provide that. In addition to, we have our own technology, our own HCM solution that's proprietary to us. It's not a US based system, it's a global based system. So it has all the local wage and hour laws. It's in 17 different languages has all the localization needed, which is really challenging that companies face you know, it worldwide where we connect into their US platforms and that type of stuff too. So but there's a technology play as well to support our clients. Got it. Mm-hmm. And um, so the ROI for these customers and entrepreneurs, you know, they would figure out like, I want to expand to South America. Um, I can do it like the hard way and the, you know, got a spreadsheet on how to do that. Or <laughs> yeah. they can reach out to you and you guys are obviously going to charge them for the services and products you provide but that simple calculation at the end of the day of all right that seems worth it and we break it down for them right since we do both sides we just break it doesn't matter to us which one they they choose we break it down for them and say hey here's the pros and cons of each one right kind of depends on what they need um you know and so that's that's how we do it they don't have to figure out that calc on their own we do it yeah right so and uh are there any countries that are just like a bridge too far as far as like too complicated or too unstable or <laughs> we, you would be surprised the um, requests we get um, across the world as you know, these emerging economies are coming online. Um, they are expanding into other places that are not kind of an emerging economy, but the answer is no. I mean, there are some we stay away from, like we're not going to do business in something that's getting us in trouble, like in North Korea or yeah. Iran or something like that. But, but certainly um, there are opportunities in many, many countries because there's a lot of money being um, allocated to these these organizations. You know, it's if you, it's really interesting when you think about global. I kind of get geeked out about it, right? Mm-hmm. Back in the day when people used to go global, it was because they wanted to save money on labor. So if Nike went to Brazil, it was like they want a cheaper labor to build their shoes, mm-hmm. right? But now that there's these merging economies, which is unique in human history, meaning like a rising middle class in China, India, Brazil, I mean, that's billions of people mm-hmm. now Nike's in Brazil because they want them to wear shoes. They want them to wear the Nike shoes and those kids play, yeah. right? They have money to spend and that that's unique right now. And as if anything, you know, I, I look at the pandemic that we've been through, it's actually made us more global as economy, as an economy overall mm-hmm. than it ever has been in the past. And we see that where people are struggling with labor, for example, this work from anywhere concept, you know, some of these really great employees, they want to work in France for a year. Yeah. Well, are you going to keep them or let them go? How are you going to manage that? We see that from some of our clients yeah. that they're trying to, to balance some of these things and what, you know, the demands of their key employees are. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, globalization has been around since kind of the dawn of time with the Silk Road and caravans. Yes. And you've yes. got a ship, you're going to sell it somewhere else. Yep. And, um, but uh, technology and all these platforms definitely oh, yeah. make it easier. Yeah. Um, and a little bit more transparent because yes. I assume every merchant from the dawn of times, like, uh, we'll see if this works out or not. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. 
you don't have to worry about robbers and barons and pirates anymore, but you have to worry about other things. Regulations and laws and, you know, all things that you could step into and you don't realize. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. So uh, with the title of chief revenue officer, uh, that one's pretty direct. Yeah. Um, But I would be interested in, you know, kind of another snapshot summary of what a CRO does uh, in your case um, with a distributed workforce with offices throughout the world. Um, How do you create the revenue? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, that's, that's really what I do, right? I'm responsible for all things revenue. Right. So not only on the front end, but making sure that we're, you know, delivering and executing and, and making sure that our clients are happy. Right. That kind of all falls under my preview. And so, um, you know, it's daunting. It can be challenging at times. Um, hiring the key people is important. Right. Having the right kind of I mean, we, we service our clients, you know, 24 six really around the world. Um, not quite not quite 24 um, seven. But, you know, that we have people working all around the clock. Right. And yeah. so different cultures, um, you know, different kind of nuances. And so what we have to do is understand the different markets we're in, market towards them. We have a great marketing team that helps support us in those things. And because these, even though they're different markets, different issues, companies that we're talking to, they want to go global, right? They, they have the similar challenge, right, of the different regulations and different laws and different countries and how to manage them. So we try to tap into those individuals um, and, and sell our, our, our products and services too. And then, you know, typically what happens is they, they find great success with this and then they go to the next country and then they go to the next, right? So it just continues to grow. We continue to grow with them as they do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so for you personally, whether you've got like the dashboards on big computers and it's all <laughs> fancy, what are you watching and monitoring, um, on a daily basis that helps you keep the, the circus going as far as revenue yeah, for sure. So the things that I pay attention to, like our key kind of metrics, right? Obviously, kind of how our inbounds doing our leads, you know, what, what, what does that look like? Our kind of first calls discovery, kind of on the sales side of things, uh, definitely looking at the pipeline, right? How we're, we're moving, you know, how are we transitioning from the different stages within our pipeline? Um, how are we, you know, executing with, you know, our contracts? Um, are we getting stuck on certain things? Do we have to realign, you know, there's a, you know, sticking point or whatever the case might be. Um, so I'm involved in that quite a bit. The other thing that, um, and then once it goes into, you know, kind of into operations, making sure the handoffs are going well, but I pay attention to our channel partners, right? What are they doing? Um, what are we involved in? How do we support them? And we're, we're going to be at your event here in, you know, here in Salt Lake in a couple of weeks, we'll be supporting there. We have a booth, um, but we look at our channels. We have some big channel partners that bring us business. You would think they would know how to do it, but they, they rely on us to help support them. Right. So those are things I pay close attention to. Got it. And uh, what is an example of a of a channel partner? Sure. Yeah. So we have lots of different channel partners. Right. So we have strategic partners like an ADP. Right. Where they might have some of the gaps on their global offering and we step in and fill those gaps. Right. They don't have the EOR, for example. Um, They might need you know, they might not do some of the countries that we do. Um, So we support them from that perspective. So that's a you know kind of a strategic partner. So so the other thing is um, channel partners like that are kind of aligned, calling to the same individuals that we are. And we kind of, you know, have them met, met you know, they, they share some of the things that we provide. Also, we, are, we, we have technology. So we partner on the technology side with some organizations, right? We're building, you know, the right, you know, APIs to the different, you know, connections of the right, the, the work days of the world. Obviously, the ADP is already built. And some of these other ones that we've got on the list, right? So... Those are important that we work with them because we provide kind of uniqueness, that localization that maybe they don't have in their offering. Got it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with like a kind of a normal straightforward transaction, somebody comes to your website or gives you a call. Yeah. Um, that one's probably a little bit more cut and dried, but yeah. for entrepreneurs out there that uh, like partner channel type of relations, mm-hmm. it seems like those might be a little bit more nuanced, right? Yeah. As far as, okay, we'll put your logo on our website as like a preferred partner versus like, you guys have a contract or an agreement with them with yeah. revenue share. Um, is that accurate? That those are all a little bit it, more. It, it is. It is nuanced. Okay. It really is because some some are, you know, well, you know, put put your name on a website type of thing and really don't you don't ever really talk. The other ones really see the value because, you know, we try to look for those group companies that they're growing right. Our partners are growing, but we also want to support them because if if they struggle to talk global today, 
it's really hard for them because they'll lose to a, a competitor that does. Yeah. And we try to bring that, you know, our services to support them so they can be, they can lean into that global conversation so they can win all their domestic business all day long that they want. Yeah. Right. Because they're able to identify these challenges of these three employees or these 300 employees in these, in, in these different countries. Yeah. Right. So we've been looking at it from the like American perspective, right? Yeah. But there's um, a lot of countries that would like to sell into America. Yeah. And I assume you guys play both sides of that one. Yeah. So, you know, you think about, you know, American companies are scared of kind of the HR laws worldwide, not so much the tax laws because they're in one country. Yeah. Uh, companies that are outside the U.S. are scared to death of the tax laws, right? Lived in, worked in, right? Yeah. All the different states, the benefit situation. I mean, they scares them to death, right? So we do provide an employer of record service for them. So they don't have their have to have their own entity as well, right? We we will be their entity, so to speak, in this country. So they don't have to worry about any of those. And those employees can go in and, you know, sell their products and services just like we do in any other country. Yeah. So that's been a big and we're seeing that as an increase, right? As that's become more popular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is mostly just snarky, but like rural West Virginia versus like Northern California could be considered different countries, cultures. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> uh, but I assume you guys don't get yeah. that granular of like state to state in America. No. Okay. Yeah, it, well, we would have to still do new higher reporting tax filings in those states on behalf of them um, to support them. But that, yeah, you, you know, we're, we're, we're agnostic to where they want to go. Got it. Really, they're trying to find who's the best employee. That's what's happening now, right? I mean, this, this concept of work from anywhere has really provided the idea of hire from anywhere. Yeah. And that's not, I mean, that's, we're seeing that being a, a huge trend where they need talent in, you know, whatever country or here in the U.S. in kind of a rural area, but that's where that person wants to live. Yeah. They're going to make it work. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right. So the, going back to the title of chief revenue officer, um, you know, I assume you know what, where revenue is coming from, right? Sure. Like I know revenue is <laughs> coming from that's, these five yeah. places. Um what about like a eureka moment of, oh, we could get new revenue from here, right? That could be your idea mm -hmm. based on a moment of brilliance or like data and sure. analytics or it could yeah. come from the CEO or any, anyone, yeah. right? Um, what's the process for that in a company of you know, your guys' size of, we think there's some new revenue streams for us. How do you guys kind of kick the tires, validate that and... Go yeah. The process. No, no, that's, that's a great question. And we, we do, we, we, you know, I'll give you, I'll give you an example of this. Um, we just, we just launched our, our global HR 360 product, right? So that's a, a technology, but also services behind it. So there's a lot of companies in the mid market space in particular that, you know, they've got a handful of employees here. They got a handful of employees there and they're like, I can't hire HR people in each one of these countries. I don't know how to handle this. <clears throat> right. And it becomes daunting really, really fast. And they need to be on top of that stuff. So we have become that comprehensive HR, you know, extension of their HR team worldwide. So we facilitate that for them now, right? We can answer those questions. Are there employees in those countries, right? We support them on that. And really, so the genesis of an, an idea like that is, okay, our clients are really strapped here, right? They're, they've got a lot of questions around it. So how can we best support them? And this is the platform that we can do it. And so we put the right people in place to make that happen, making sure our pricing was aligned in the market so companies could take advantage of it and not, you know, have this huge cost of a burden of around HR. So it's been a great hit, you know, a great success for us. But, you know, that, that, those things are, um, that's one thing I love about Global Upside. We're very nimble when it comes to that, right? Because we are global. There's a lot of things going on and how can we support our clients and what makes the most sense for them? And it really is feedback from our clients. Yeah. They just need it. Yeah. Right. Very cool. And, um, kind of the meat and potatoes section of things uh, mm. you've got a lot of responsibilities and um, a lot of change, right? You mm -hmm. guys have to stay on top of things. How do you uh, uh, frame up your day and kind of manage your time? What are some tricks and tools and methods that you use personally? Yeah, I don't have a silver bullet on this for sure. I'm just going to tell you, right? It is, it is, uh, I don't know, you know, I don't, the rest of you that are the listeners, <laughs> You know, with, with COVID and working from home and, and you know, having that kind of flexibility, it, it seems like my calendar's even gotten busier, right? Um, more calls, more um, appointments, right? Virtual everything, right? Zoom, I'm on that thing a lot. Yeah. Um, but to balance it is there's times where, you know, 
you know, I've hired some people to help support me on this, right? I mean, I, I have some really, I have a great executive assistant that just manages my schedule like crazy. Yeah. Um, and she keeps an eye on my email, right? I, I don't have time to see that thing. Yeah. And that's scary when you have a lot of things and <laughs> you're managing people around the world. Yeah. Um, you know, you need, you can't miss something, right? You got to be responsive. And she is fantastic. So aligning the right people and understanding that, hey, I might not get back to your email right away. It's important to me. Um, and, but, you know, it, trying to balance all those things were always a challenge. I do try to prioritize it. What's the most important? It's typically channel, key, key people in my organization, my teams, right, that I support across the space. Those ones are a priority. Um, so I, if I can take some load off of them, it makes their lives easier. Um, so, so those are the things that I work on. But, I, you know, things like email, um, we have all types of tools internally to communicate. And so all of those things help, but it can be daunting. Um, yeah. And so, you know, my tips and trick is don't be afraid. And it, I was kind of against this, honestly, about like hiring an executive. Says, I don't need this. I can manage it all, right? What are you, what are you talking about? Yeah. I don't know what I'd do without her. Like yeah. it's that important, right? So the right key people in the organization can really help. And now our productions, you know, my production's gotten much, much higher than ever before yeah. and will continue to grow. Yeah. Right? A lot of value in a good uh, assistant or yeah. a hand man or gal. Yeah. yeah. A lot of value. That's right. Um, all right. So um, what's got you uh, personally most excited about um, the next iteration or product or development with uh, Upside? Well, continue to drive um, kind of our message, right? There's a lot of companies that do, you know, little pieces of what we do, um, but we bring that whole lifestyle, oh, life cycle, sorry, to a company. And that is exciting, right? Because you know, coming from my background and where I've been, I was at ADP and, you know, dealing with some of the gaps and stuff and having to, you know, cobble some stuff together. It's great to be able to come in and say, listen, we can help you in this, right? We can help you as you're a startup or you're spinning off, right? You're, you're you know, going through the M&A process or whatever the case might be. We can help and support you. That is, that's exciting to me, right? And it's exciting to me as we enhance our products, our technology. It's even getting better. So companies can onboard employees fast. Yeah. Right, they can have a, a contract kind of almost instantly. Right, once they're ready to go, they don't have to go through this whole process because it's already been done behind the scenes. Yeah, and the tech makes sure that they stay compliant. Right, so they're not doing something they shouldn't because they're not paying the right, you know, overtime and stuff. So those continue to enhance what we have is very exciting to me because companies are going more global now than ever. Mm -hmm. They really are. It's they're trying to take advantage of what's out there. Um, they don't want to get stuck in just one economy. You know, they want to be evolved as, you know, you know, as we just have seen it. And so that will continue to grow and expand. So it's exciting to, to for me to see that happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. the, the story there and uh, some tidbits of advice and knowledge. Appreciate you taking the time and it's been great having you. Hey, thanks. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the invite.